could do this, but use whatever. But, okay. So we're talking about make files today. So who's used make files? What have you used them for? Tell me some stories. Yeah. Running through the test cases in CS236. Okay. All right. So in your classes, they just give you some make file, and you type make, and it does magic things. Is that, have I covered everyone's cases now? <laughs> Anyone else use it for anything else? Aside from typing make and cool stuff happens. All right, I got it all summarized. We can pack it up. <laughs> okay, so, so the way make files work is, well, you need a make file. And it doesn't matter if you capitalize it or not. Okay. And, but if I call it make file, what's important? Well, it's not that important, but what's kind of nice is it's down here, VS Code says, hey, uh, you know, I know this is a make file. So that's always nice. Okay, so the way make files work is they are recipes. They build things like you need recipes at home to make yourself dinner. Um, different things go in the recipe and something wonderful comes out, hopefully. Um, so to make a new recipe in make, you simply do something like this. Okay, you give the recipe a name. And is this big enough or not one step bigger? Bigger, one more. Okay. Okay, so you give the recipe a name and then you give it just commands that are going to be run. Um, basically, these are commands that you could run in the shell. So something like, uh, echo is kind of a weird one, but let's. So if you haven't used echo, echo print something. So we're gonna do this, okay? And we'll, we'll do two commands because you can put as many commands as you want. So um, one thing that's important is that this, this tab character is the most important part of the make file. If you put spaces there, it won't work. It has to be tab. So what's nice, what VS Code does is smart, is that even though I code my normal code to spaces when I open a make file, it's smart enough to always put tabs there for me, even though I use spaces. So, okay. So we can have as many commands as we want. It doesn't really matter if we have white space in between the lines. Okay. And, and we can have multiple recipes. So, okay. And so when I type, when I type make, what it's going to do, it's gonna look in the current directory for a make file, okay? Then it's going to go and run a recipe, whatever recipe I give it. So I could say make by, and this is, I say echo is kind of weird because what make does is it prints the command that it's about to run, okay? And then it runs the command. So I've printed echo by and then by. So um, I won't be doing it a lot, but you, you can always suppress make. If you put an at symbol in front, it, it won't print that command. It will just run it. Okay. So if you just type make, it just runs whatever one's at the top of the file, the first, the first one. Okay. So if I clean this up a little more, Okay, then I can just, it's simply just a really short way rather than if I'm a CS instructor and say, oh, to compile, you need to type GCC and this and this and this. I just make something that says, oh, make and build or something. And I tell my students to type make and it all happens. Okay. So um, it's, so we're going to do some stuff with, um, with C coding, with programming C, uh, the, with compiling C code, that's some of the examples I'll work through with you here. And that's kind of makes bread and butter what it's, I don't know if it was made to do that, um, but it's really good at doing that, lots of these for that. But you can use it for whatever you want. If you just, sometimes I'm just lazy. It's like, oh, I always come to this directory and usually when I'm working on my experiments, I run this big long command with a bunch of stuff. I'm just gonna make a short form for it. I'll put a few different recipes in there of things to do. So the real power from make comes from the fact that, yes, question. So is make just a type of batch recipe? A 
little bit. Um, it's more about the fact that these different commands can get chained together. Okay, and that's what I'll show you in a second here. Okay, so let's try something else. Okay. So let's change this into, um, well, let me look at my examples here. Okay. So Okay, so I'm going to change this target. So when I run, oh, let's do this. Oh, let's do the same thing. Okay, it's going to run this, and so kind of normal shell stuff that you can use, like like redirecting stuff into files, you can do that in your main. Okay, so this created a test.txt. Okay, and I put that in there. Okay, now. Now the real power for make is to tell it that this is a recipe to create that file. I say, this is how I create test.txt. This is the recipe I want you to run to build this thing. Okay. And so now if I say make test.txt, oh, this is weird. Okay. Um, this is when I, I decided to do new stuff on the fly right now. This will happen. Okay. So it says, hey, uh, I already made that for you. Okay, it's already there. Um, I'm not gonna run it again, sorry. Okay, so I could get rid of it. Okay, and then make says, oh yeah, yes, I need to run that command for you and make it for you. Okay. All right, so, um, okay, now, so now let's kind of look at the, the chaining there. Okay, so let's say, oh, you know, I want to make a test2.txt and it's going to take the first file that's created and it's going to add to it. How do I add another line on this file? Anyone? Other bash experts here? Use two with the arrow thing. Yeah. Okay. So if I have two of them, it'll add to the end of the file. Okay. So let's try that. Oh, I want it to create test two. Okay. Okay, this is a good error. It says, hey, you told me to make something. I don't know how to make it because I had a typo. Okay, it says there's no rules to make this. Okay. I had text two instead of test two. Okay. So now in, oh, I'm sorry. That doesn't make sense. I was trying to like, add it to another file, but <laughs> let's just get to my real example and let's forget this for now. Okay. Um, my, my compiling C code, I'm more comfortable with and I'm gonna just screw something up here. So just, just put that on the back burner for now. Okay. So, all right, so I've got some C code. Okay. It's a cool little calculator. It, it takes input. And it prints it. So let's see. I will show you. It has three different C files. I have to compile them all together. I'm lazy. I'm just going to say do that. Okay. <laughs> and I will run it. GCC always produces a dot o. Okay. And then I just know how this program works, so I can do that. And and okay, it's it's a dumb little program, but. Um, Okay, so it basically just takes inputs and, and does stuff. And it's split across three different files just to demonstrate some stuff we're gonna do. Okay. So okay, so the, the proper way I'd compile this actually um, is I, I would take um, all my sorry, my brain's here. Okay, and then I provide an output, say I'm going to make an executable called calc. Okay, and so this will produce something called calc that I can run. Here it is, a.o. Okay, 
All right, so I'm going to turn that into a recipe. No questions here. Okay. So let's just get rid of this old one. We'll just, okay. Remember, I am creating the calc file. So this is the target. That's the name of my recipe. And this is what I'm going to run. Okay. So now I come here and I type make. And it says calc is up to date. So what does that mean that it's up to date? It means the file already exists and you haven't told me when it needs to be recreated, okay? If I tell make what it depends on, then it's gonna be even smarter, okay? So if I say, well, actually calc kind of depends on, on all of these C files here, okay? It actually depends on other stuff as well, right? It depends on my header files as well. Okay. And so now make, when I run this, I'm gonna get the same message. Okay, but behind the scenes, what make is doing, is this essentially going and looking at when I changed all the files. And it's saying, look, I made calc for you today. And you told me, it is produced from all of these different ingredients, okay? And calc is newer than all of these ingredients, so it's up to date, it doesn't need to be remade, okay? If I were to go open one of these, like main, okay? And, and perhaps when I do my printing here, I'd like an extra space, okay? And I save my file. Now let's look at when the files changed, okay? And you'll see that main is actually newer than calc. Okay. It's also very important that your system date and time is correct when you're messing around with make stuff. <laughs> okay. So now make says, oh, I need to run because something I was dependent on has changed. Okay. So it's kind of like magic a little bit and that it takes care of figuring out what needs to be compiled for us automatically as long as we build the make file correctly. Okay. If I run it again, I'll say, hey, it's up to date. Okay. okay. I, I often have a clean target, which gets rid of stuff that I don't care about. Okay. And so I can say make clean, it deletes that. I can run make, we can go back and forth doing this. Okay, any questions at this point? Yeah. So for calc, your, your target name is calc. Does that have to match the output file name then? Yeah. Like what if it was different? Like it was just like calculate or like they were different names, what would happen? Okay, so this is this is what would happen. So let's try that. It produces calculate. Okay. So let me go and change the file again so that it needs to be run, okay? Okay, now it produced a new calculate, but you've told it it produces calc, so you've kind of tricked it. What it's gonna do when I run it again is it's gonna say, oh, this needs to be run again. Oh, this needs to be run again, this needs to be run again, because you're never actually producing the file you're telling make you are, so. Um, and if we do it the other way around, something, something similar will happen essentially. So, so if, you, if you do your make files correctly, after you run it once and run it again, the second time it shouldn't have any work to do, so. Yeah. So best practice is you have the, the different make, like calc and clean, you have the earlier ones that are relating to a specific file, the same name as that file. Oh, we're far from best practices. So I usually see, I, like, I, I don't you usually, usually see <laughs> something <laughs> like this. I usually just see all and then a few other things like clear. You ever see something that looks like that? <laughs> okay, that's where we're going to get to. That's step six. We're on step one. <laughs> okay. well, we'll get there. We'll get I mainly there. learned from looking at other make files and just writing my own, but I never knew that that was actually a best practice thing. So this you, is you can never really, I don't know. <laughs> you look at other people's make files and it's like, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard. So hopefully it'll make more sense after we go through and make that cryptic thing. Okay. So, 
Okay, so we're going to kind of keep changing some things. So one is that, um, okay, so I'd like to have variables in my make file. Okay, and so one thing is this, you'll often see this, we'll say, oh, um, this is going to be the name of my compiler. Okay, I'm going to use GCC. And so if I want to use that variable somewhere else, then the, then the notation is a dollar symbol with parentheses in the name of it, okay? So this does the exact same thing, okay? And another one we use, these are kind of established names, is stuff we're gonna pass into like flags that we're gonna pass into the compiler. So you can learn a little bit about C compiling while we learn about make files, but Okay, and so now it would be like I'm typing GCC-03 if you've done it, says, hey, please try and optimize and speed up this code. Dash wall says, tell me about all warnings. Okay, not just, so. it's not even all warnings. It's, you need like W extra and pedantic. Oh. Okay, and so when you run the command, it gets expanded out. And so you can see kind of what, what all your variables became. Okay, so that's variables. Okay, that was step two. I'm gonna keep just up and up in the difficulty here. Okay, all right. Now we'll get to the more interesting stuff that I tried to do and screwed up. So, okay. So what make is really good for is chaining these recipes together. So if you know when we do C code, this is one way we can compile C code is we can type GCC in all the source files. But it's a kind of lousy way because if you had a C program that depended on say 10,000 C files, which wouldn't be strange um, for, for really big projects, I should say, um, you wouldn't want to recompile 10,000 files every time you change the one you were working on. You'd, you'd wait like 20, 30 minutes every time you did that. It's horrible. So, so the way what GCC is really doing behind the scenes is it's compiling each file separately and linking them together. We can explicitly do that separately. So, so if you're not familiar, the way we normally compile C files is, well, okay, so we'd go like this. We'd say, um, we use the dash C flag, which will produce a dot o file. So it compiles just that one file. It doesn't link it to system libraries and things like that yet. Okay. It's just compiled that one and then we would link all of those together. So I'm going to make a big make file here. Um, I'm just deciding if I want to type it or how lazy I'm feeling. I'm feeling lazy. We're going to go get it. <laughs> Okay, so let's, since I was lazy, let me take the time to show you. Okay, nothing's changed up here. Okay, and almost nothing has changed here. Okay, except we're not going to produce it from C files anymore. We're going to produce calc from object files that were, have already been compiled. Okay. Okay, so... But aside from that, it's the same. We've just provided the list of object files to GCC now, okay? Now we need to build those object files, okay? Let's see what happens. Let me, let me get rid of this stuff first. So you can see that. I'm gonna comment it out. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of any object files I just didn't make. And, oh, okay, okay. Did I save it? No, that's probably my problem. <laughs> okay. No. Stupid make. Okay. <laughs> okay. You try and teach things, make a secret behind the scenes recipes about how to build C code that it's not going to tell us about. It's like ingrained into the very fabric of make. And so even when I try and make it forget, it can't forget. 
So I wanted to get an error saying, hey, I don't have a .o file and you didn't tell me how to make it. But it makes really smart, it knows how to make .o files. So um, anyway, <laughs> okay. The, the proper way here is I give it a recipe of how to make compute.o. I say, well, it depends on these two files, compute.c and compute.h, and you're gonna do it by running gcc-c compute.c, okay? And so you'll see kind of now why we like having variables because if I change my compiler flags, I don't wanna change them in every single place. I like to just change it in one place, okay? And so what's neat now is I go here and I type make. Okay. Oh, I didn't say that. Okay. Okay, there, that, those look like my commands. They look quite similar to the built in ones. Oh, okay, because these are built in names that get passed into. There's a lot of behind the scenes C code stuff that you often don't care about. Okay, so what happened is. It kind of works backwards, okay? If you want, we could like turn on the verbose option of make, but the output is like 50 pages long and we're not gonna do that. <laughs> um, but what happens is it basically starts at the top, right? I didn't say make calc, I just said make. So it starts at the one at the top and it says, hmm, this depends on three files which don't exist yet. And for each one, it kind of goes back recursively. It says, okay, well, do I know how to make this file? Make is, uh, that's what I um, Do I know how to make this file? It says, yeah, I know how to make compute.o, and it depends on these files. And these ones I do have already, and so I can make compute.o, and it does that for all the other ones. And so it ends up kind of running these three first and then coming back out to the first one last. Okay. So kind of this recursion type thing. And so this is, Okay, now here's the real power of make. If I go and change a file, like if I go in here and just add a new line. Oh, my formatter said, no, you don't want to change that. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I have to fight with my formatter. Um, what in here could I change? <laughs> you just a comment. Comments, okay. Oh, how about this? Oh man, okay. I write too much Python, I'm sorry. <laughs> You'd never do this in my 3.30 class write a comment like this, but. Okay, so now when I run make, it's pretty cool. It says, hey, okay. It basically goes back through their recursive recipes back and it sees that compute.c has changed and it says, oh, that must mean I need to regenerate compute.o. And now compute.o has changed. That means I need to regenerate calc. But it didn't compile the other two files. It only compiled what it needed to. Okay. And so if there were thousands of C files, it would only compile the one it needed to, and then it would link all the object files together. Okay. If you're on a really big project, the linking can take a long time, and, and there's no really easy way out of that. But Okay, so, all right, any questions at this point? Usually people like to fool around. We can try, delete things, mess with things, see what make does. Yeah. How do you remember writing? Oh, those are the next steps, so. Okay. Right. It's coming, it's coming. We're at three of six, so, yeah. Oh, They kind of are in the sense that make has built-in rules and those built-in rules about how to compile C flags know about these special names. And even if you don't want it to define your own rule, you could just still define the flags and it'll get passed in. I don't ever do that. I, I always just spell it my own make file. I don't even do that. I use CMake, which is next lecture. So, so like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, my second question was order does matter. No. No, it doesn't matter. No. Well, you have to type in make calc then, right? Because it's 
Yeah, I'd have to type in make calc. So you care about like the first one? Yeah, you care about where the first one is. Often we call it all at the top. Sometimes you'll, I don't know if you've seen, make type make all. We often call the one at the top all. There's nothing special with that, I don't think. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So earlier when you put the little at symbol to kind of get rid of the whole command, where would you put that here if you didn't want to see it? Oh, you'd put it in all of these. Just at the very beginning. Yeah. And then it did it, but we don't know what it ran. <laughs> okay. So sometimes it's good to see like which one yeah. ran, which ones didn't. Yeah. I, I usually don't hide my compiler ones. Those ones are pretty useful to see. Yeah. Little make files and like further like directories above it. Like sub make files for different sets and things like I feel like that I makes me pull my hair out and then I go use CMake. Yeah, no, CMake makes that a lot easier. I'm just I'm trying to remember how you can do it. Works. That's where you go to Stack Overflow and and see what the real experts have to say about it. Um, <laughs> right. It's really easy to screw up yeah. make files that call other make files and things like that. Um, I, I mean, I've done it before, but I just don't spend my time on it these days. So I've never done it myself. I've just messed with other. <laughs> yeah, you, you can do it. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep going. Flip my page. What's next? Okay, so make has some, some built in variables that it creates for you on the fly. Okay, they are the worst named variables that one could make. No pun intended. Let's go look at them. I always have to go here, make automatic variables. Okay. Now you remember what we prefix variables with and make a dollar sign. So these are the names of the variables. At symbol, percent, less than, question mark, caret, plus. They're not super memorable names, but they're really short. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I often have on this page because it's hard to remember what they all do. Okay, but, but you could go here and read about them if you want. So for example, I'll use this one first. Ah, it's the file name of the target of the rule. Okay, so if I go back here and I am producing calc, I don't need to type calc here. I can type dollar at, okay. It looks like gibberish, but this is a variable name that means whatever is up here, okay? Okay, there's also one, the other one I use most often is the name of the first prerequisite, okay? Prerequisite are, are these things coming in, okay? So the one that you name first, I can access like this. Now you're starting to see why it's gonna look weird. So. Okay. I could even do this one. The name of all the prerequisites. I start to worry as I change it more, I lose more and more of you, but. Um, okay, so. Okay, it still works. It still prints out the actual commands it runs, but, but things are starting to, to look more weird, okay? Uh, I mean, this is, this is our command that we're running, some variable names, okay? So, um, but, it, but it's often just kind of nice to, to do it this way. So, um, so you may see something like this where sometimes I just need to move files around. I just need to go get a file from one place and put it somewhere else. So like, so maybe you'll just see something like this. It'll say, oh, um, oh, go copy this to that or something like that, okay? And you see this line in the make file and you're like, what in the world is that even <laughs> supposed to mean? But it just means copy this file to that one. So 
there, there's lots of very compact things you can do to make files that quickly make it confusing if, if you're not familiar with them. So, um, okay. All right, page flip. I think we're at number five now. Okay. All of this is driven by our laziness of typing um, and maintaining things. All of these kind of look the same. It's kind of dumb that I need to do that. So, I mean, they kind of look the same, but they have different header files. So, um, but at least, at least these two look the same, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, if you need to make an O file, why don't you go get the same named .c and .h? It depends on those. And that's how I make .o files. Okay, so now it's a more generic recipe. And these are the kind of recipes that are built in behind the scenes that you don't really see, but. Okay, and I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave that one alone since it doesn't have a .h. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, so you make a file, you specify the name that versus So I was wondering about like precedence, or does it like tell which recipe to use based off of? Ooh, I I think okay. If you have multiple recipes, I believe then order matters, and then it's the first match. But somebody could correct me. I'm just kind of guessing. So if you're to type the name that and use the first recipe. Oh, okay, let's say the last recipe. I'll change my answer. Okay. <laughs> you wanna see the verbo verbose output? <laughs> BBV? I can't remember how to do it. Yeah, you're like, why are you doing three? Why don't you just start with one? Okay. <laughs> Because, because the first one's useless, I think, is the answer. Oh, that's version. See, Sony's telling me what. Now we, we're just getting the version again. Capital V? Try P. P? <laughs> and I, I ran out of history. My thing. <laughs> I have had to look through that before. Type it in um, the pardon? You can type it in the less. Yeah, I, right. So this is a good lesson. What happens if you run a really long command like that, and you can't look back, but you need to find something? You go throw it in a file. But I. Creatively named log.txt. Then you open it in your text editor. Then you go find what you need to find in there. <laughs> so, so that, that's. I mean, I promise all of you will run into that at some point. If you type it to just less, it will open it up without having to write. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I usually like going in my text editor because I like to use. Find, yeah, control F and stuff like that. You can search in less as well. You can use the slash. I know. I'm just really bad at it. <laughs> no, I, I, I hear you. That is a good way to do it too. So, and the less, yeah. And you can find in less, you're saying like yeah, this? Slash and then type something and then press enter. Okay. Okay, and it'll jump. I think if you press N, it will go to N for next. Yeah. yeah. It works like Vim, so. Yeah. I'm semi used competent at Vim, but it's been a while, so. Okay, so we're, we're almost at the end here. Um, but, but uh, um, let's see. Okay, so, so what do I wanna do last here? Um, so the last thing is I'm gonna try and absorb in the last main.c, okay? And then I'm gonna just kind of further make this more generic. I'm gonna turn it into a make file that could be used to compile any directory of C code. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just totally get rid of all my names. Okay, so I'm gonna say, hey, the target that I'm actually producing is called calc. Okay, it's kind of nice to just change things on top. Okay, and and then it's like, well, hmm, how do I get this list? Wildcard. Pardon? Use a wildcard. Okay, you're right. So there, there are functions that we can use, like wildcard, that generates a list of things that match. But unfortunately, the .o files aren't made yet. So, I mean, so hopefully you see the problem. If I clean everything and say like ls start o, there's nothing, there are no .o files. Okay. So let's leave that one for a second. I can say all the ones that end in dot C and then convert to add an O at the end of them. Yeah. Or something like that. Exactly. I can find all the ones that go on dot C. And then you can do this weird thing in make. Yeah, it's kind of cryptic. I have to look at my cheat sheet. But I can say, hey, turn dot C's into dot O's. Okay. And um, okay, and, and now okay, now it's quite generic. And then I'm going to be lazy, and I'm basically just going to say, hey, if any of the header files change, just recompile the C file. So I'm just going to say. The headers be dot h or yeah thanks. I'm just gonna say hey, I'm not gonna keep track of which header you include in which file, okay? And you'll notice I, I should have been doing that in my earlier make files. That dependency list should have been longer. It should have included other header files I included in that file. Okay. If you don't do it properly, then you go change some header. You didn't put it in a dependency list. And then a file doesn't get recompiled that should have got recompiled and you bang your head against the wall a long time. Okay. And then you go use CMake that does it for you again. Okay. <laughs> but, but the lazy way is just to say, hey, every .o file depends on all the headers that are out there. Okay. It means if I change any header, I'm going to recompile all the .cs. There's fancier ways to do it. You can like run commands that look at your C code and find the dependencies and generate it for you. It's just easier to use CMake at that point. So, um, but anyway, I, I've made, I can get rid of this one now. It just matches the pattern. Um, okay, so I've made a make file that is 100% generic, nothing to do with anything in my directory. And so, still works just the same as, as day one here. Okay, so if you can go Google, hey, good make files or good C make file example, you'll find something kind of like this. Everyone has their own flavor that they maybe carry from project to project with them. And some people's are pretty fancy, but um, this is kind of the, the basics of make. So hopefully you see that this is has use far beyond just compiling C code. So a lot of you, for example, in my group, we do stuff with FPGA tools, tons of different FPGA tools from different people and different vendors. And it's like, oh, I wanna take like my Verilog and put it to the synthesis tool. And then I wanna take the netlist that comes out and I wanna put it in this tool. And then I take the thing that comes out of there and put it into that tool. And make files, that's their bread and butter, right? They can chain together different recipes if one thing changes, it only reruns what needs to be updated. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't have to be about compiling C code. You can use it for whatever you want. You could just dumb it down. You can just, like I said at the beginning, you can just have different recipes for just running different commands on the shell that you don't feel like typing up that day. Okay, so kind of the sky's the limit. So when we, next one is about CMake, okay, CMake, is a much simpler language to specify the C files in your project and how you want them compiled. 
and CMake will automatically create a make file for you that is far fancier than anything we've looked at here and almost impossible to make any sense of, but you never look inside of it. So um, and I think Dr. Magnuson is going to talk about that on Friday. So any questions about make? Yeah. Uh, oh, a CMake list? Uh, okay, that, that's just CMake's equivalent. That, that's, um, that's just what you feed into CMake. So um, that's how you describe your project to CMake is with CMake list. So um, when Dr. Magnuson talks about CMake, kind of I'm editing my make file. Once you use CMake, CMake makes your make file. And the way you tell CMake what to do is with CMake lists file, so. Yeah. So sorry, I'm still like So I get that you're you're feeding in like wild card. I'm just gonna feed like some other like I'm like, hey, I want you to do a make, but I want to feed you like this file like using this string or like ah okay, okay, let's do that. This is good. So I've seen that like with some of the stuff that I'm working with that like they have one where like you feed it the name of the file essentially and then it makes it. So it's kind of Okay, help me out someone, Dr. Lundgren. That? Any takers? There are, you can make overridable variable names. Is it that? Colon equals? We're not sure. Okay. Okay, so if you do colon equals, it can be overridden, or sorry, it, it is basically only applied if you haven't already defined it by externally, like I did here when I called me, okay? I wouldn't be able to override the other ones where I've used the equal sign. And so you will often see colon equals up at the top, but this I can basically pass in things here. Okay, and so now you'll see it's compiled with O2. Does that answer what you're looking for or were you thinking of something else? Uh, closer, I don't know, I just like, the example I'm thinking of like, is that there's a JSON with a name. Uh-huh. And so, so they just feed in the string. So they don't add in the dot appendage, the dot JSON appendage, it's just whatever the file name is before the end date. And it's uh -huh. parentheses, and like in the quotations, the string, and then it finds that file and then it does what it's done it. So I'm just trying to understand how they do something like ah, that. I'd need to see the make file, but we could. So what would I type? Something like this. Make. Yeah, it's like make and then parentheses. Like this? Yeah. I don't know if I've seen that syntax. Any like Pardon? I don't know. I don't know if I've seen parentheses like. I'll check it out. But, but yeah, check it out. Show us. I mean, I'm pretty confident with with what I've talked about here. You can at least make sense of most make files. Uh, you, I mean, they may use different like these are essentially like function calls into makes built-in functions. So they may use different calls into different things. You know, they'll have to learn about what they are. Um, but, but this kind of gives you enough to go learn about almost any make file, so. Yeah, make it so like there's like a default rule that just takes in whatever you put after make, like say you just say make and then this file, is there a way to just have a rule that gets overridden with whatever thing you've put after make and then you kind of can build a rule around that, like a default over rule and actually get that parameter? Well. Without having to do like a equals type thing. Like, a, like special no, I'm not sure I'm quite following. I mean, you can do wildcard targets, but yeah, like you can talk about something else. Yeah, like for that, you could do like a wildcard.c rule or something, and then it just looks for a dot .c with the same name you passed in. Like I could see that. But if it could take like anything and not just a dot .c, like is there any way to just get that whatever you put after make as like a parameter with one of those like special character things? Mm, I'm not sure, but Perhaps you could do that. I've never made a catch all 
but that might work. Okay. I was just wondering if that was maybe what the person was asking as well, but it sounds a little different. But let's try it. Get whatever is passed. <laughs> oh, you can't just use the percent down here. I think it's that one. The stem with matches and implicit rule match. I think that's it. So let's try it. Ah, uh, cool. That works. Okay, so we made a catch all thing. And this is the other thing if you want to use what the wildcard matches, it's its own variable. I spent far too long with make files. I, I still don't even like them. So I, you can hear me advocate for CMake every chance I get. So any time less I can write make files, the better. But, um, no, I, I do use them a lot for, I don't use them to co compile my C code much anymore, but I use them all the time for a little shorthand script things. And before it gets too complicated, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. I, I have them all over the place in my code. Any more questions? All right, well, let's wrap it up and we'll see you on Friday, so.